Today we're at Glenburn Station, which is on the east coast on the North Island of New Zealand. So we're going to go for a hike to Honeycomb Rock, and I've never been there before. Um, I gather that it's a beautiful walk, and we're getting to a rock with a little bit of a story to tell. Glenburn Station is a large farm, and we're on the east coast, so that means this area is subject to tsunamis if there's a big earthquake on the plate boundary, which is just out to sea here. So there are signs up telling us about the tsunami hazard. And I think the walk is about an hour up the coast to find the rock. And we'll just see what we see on the way. Here on the little muddy cliff by the sea, there is a layer of pebbles at the top, and then mud underneath, and then modern pebbles on the beach here. I wonder if those pebbles represent a raised beach pushed up by an earthquake. Here's another layer of pebbles in that little cliff. And there's a whole variety of rocks on the shore here. The cliff is a shell. Oops, I'm breaking it to smithereens because it's very old. No doubt hundreds of years old since it was living. And down here at the bottom is a dark layer. Now this dark layer is a soil horizon. It's got carbon in it. So that's an old soil horizon that's been covered over by a beach. I wonder how old that soil is. Here we've got some old lampposts. I don't know whether the farmer put them here to protect the shoreline because his fence is being eroded away. Up on the hill there you can see the classic uplifted marine terrace that you see all around the east coast. That will be something like 80 to 100,000 years old since it was at sea level. And that would have been created at a time when sea level was high. It was a warm period in terms of the ice ages, so the, the last warm period was about then. And since that time, the sea retreated as ice increased in Antarctica and Greenland, and earthquakes kept moving that marine terrace upwards to where it is today, and now the sea has come back and is at a same level as it was, but the land has moved up. We're just crossing a riverbed. There's the sea in the distance. And here on the riverbed is what looks like a raised pebble beach or gravel beach. So this has been uplifted by an earthquake from where the level it was once at. The sea was once washing up and down here. This was the beach. But now, because of that uplift, the sea has retreated maybe 100 metres to its present day position. There's the storm ridge, the gravel there, that gravel, that's the modern storm ridge washed up in storms. And then this grassy bit here is an old storm ridge that's been uplifted out of reach of the sea by a big earthquake. This coastline has been uplifted by a series of earthquakes and 7,000 years ago approximately the sea was up against that steep hillside and a number of earthquakes has happened since then to push the land up and cause the sea to retreat. Some of the local wildlife, New Zealand fur seal. Try not to disturb him or her. 
So there's a big round boulder in the sea. Looks to me like a really hard concretion that's um, not quite yet eroded by the waves. Standing out because it's so hard and tough. It looks like the track has come in from the shoreline here and we're going to follow the main farm track um, onwards towards the rock. So we're just a little bit south of Glenburn Station, the buildings, and I can see in the, in the background here a very hummocky hillside, which is all the telltale signs of a big landslide that must have happened coming off the big steep slopes in the background. Who knows why that landslide must have occurred? Possibly because of the shaking of a big earthquake, because we know that we're in a place where big earthquakes happen. It could have been triggered by perhaps heavy rainfall or some other cause, but an earthquake is a definite possibility. Let's see what my partner in crime has discovered. Holy moly, that is a massive whale skull. Look at that. Someone's dragged it up off the beach with a rope by the look of it. So I'm guessing that this could be a sperm whale skull, um, but I don't know for sure. Anybody recognize it? Beautiful cows, beautiful animals. Still a bit of a way to go, but there's the big rock in the distance and um, looks like half an hour away from here. Here is a raised beach deposit, layers of sand and pebbles with shells. And underneath it here is an old tree, part of probably the remains of an old forest. If the land's been rising, why are there tree remains underneath beach deposits? Shouldn't the sediments all be marine? So after the last ice age, around 18,000 years ago, sea levels rose really quickly, more quickly than the land was uplifting and therefore flooding low-lying land. So this area was once dry forested ground and then the sea moved in drowning the forest. About 7,000 years ago, sea level stabilised, but the earthquakes, of course, continued lifting the land up. So what we see here is a landscape that was land, then sea, then land again. That means that this tree is likely to be over 7,000 years old. I actually know that there are other tree stumps at sea level further along this coast that have been dated at 8,000 years old, which fits with this history. So in this big rock we've got some round concretions inside it. So we're nearly at Honeycomb Rock and on the way, there's this one here, which is not quite as high, but it shows the honeycomb weathering really well. And so these holes are big, small and indifferent. Made by a combination of sea spray soaking the rock, the salt expanding between the grains and pushing them out, and then the wind whipping around and whipping the, the sand grains around to create the hollows. And I can see some bird's nests in here, some swallow's nests, they're beautiful little sheltered spaces. What an amazing, beautiful concretion. These concretions look like teeth of a big, huge tunny fire or monster sticking up. So, there it is. Honeycomb Rock, quite spectacular. Get up closer. Going to be careful because there's lots of seals and we don't want to upset those. Everywhere you look, there's seals. 
So um, we've arrived at Honeycomb Rock. It's quite huge and you can see why it's called Honeycomb Rock with all these holes that have been scooped out by erosion. But it's a great place to look around. What a wild, beautiful coast this is. This rock that these formations are in is late Cretaceous sandstone. It's about 90 million years old and there's quite a lot of this, um, this particular age of rock up this coastline. And there's some bits and pieces of a ship that was wrecked just over there along the shore. It was wrecked in 1967. It came from Fiji and the hulk of this boat is now scattered around half underwater with bits and pieces like this on the beach.